Welcome back to Who Chose. So it really frustrated me the other day when I couldn't find a super simple solution uh, for a flood and drain system that you could make out of parts that you get from your local hardware store. So today we're going to build a modular flood and drain bucket system. So the things you'll be needing today, two 10 liter buckets, a 20 liter bucket, some white and some black spray paint to block the light from going into the buckets. You'll need uh, some 19 millimeter poly pipe tubing. You'll need four elbows for the 19 millimeter tubing. Two T-piece adapters, one that adapts the 19 millimeter down to 13 millimeter. You'll need a pump, you'll need some hydrogen, and you'll need a length of 90 millimeter PVC piping. We'll be using a jigsaw and a drill today, uh, but you can get away with a hacksaw or whatever you've got at home. Now, the things we'll be using to adapt the 19 millimeter piping to the buckets are these. These are just mini tank linking kits. I imagine you can find them at most hardware stores and I'll link eBay affiliate links for similar items uh, in the description of the video. Let's get started. So first of all, we're gonna drill the holes in the buckets. Where you drill the holes in the buckets is extremely important because it will determine how high the bucket system will flood to and at what point it will drain. So this is the point at which you need to consider how deep you want the flood and whether you want redundancy put into the system in the sense that if you raise the height of the drain, it will always have some nutrient solution available to the plant. Whereas if you lower the drain to the very bottom, it will give you more flood and drain area and less redundancy should a pump fail. So this is a personal consideration that you will have to make uh, dependent on the reliability of your electricity, uh, the quality of your pump, etc. So I'm just going to go ahead and drill two holes, uh, the same size as the tank inlets that you've purchased. Start in forwards until the middle hole is made and then reverse the drill. And now that our holes are drilled, we can add in our tank outlets. All right, now that the outlets are attached to our flood and drain bucket system, it's time to make the media shroud. Now, the media shroud is to stop the grow media from entering into the entry and exit or the drain of the flood and drain buckets. So for the media shroud, we're just gonna cut into a length of PVC piping, making slits up the pipe and doing that on both sides and then cutting the PVC piping straight down the middle so that it can cover our inlet and outlet and give us access to unblock roots should roots make their way into the, that part of the system. So to do this, we're just gonna drill some holes. And now that the shroud holes are cut, we can make a line up the side and cut the shroud in half. Beautiful. Now we can connect up our bucket system. So I'll connect them up and show you how the system works. So as you can see here, I've connected the pipes so that the pump runs in from the reservoir underneath to the bottom inlets. And as the water is pumped into the reservoir, which I'll show you in a second, uh, it rises until it gets to the top 
outlets and then it will then just fall back down into the reservoir which will then also oxygenate the solution so i've just turned on the pump and it's now filling the buckets now with this system you do need the buckets to be level the interconnectivity of all the buckets will create a water level across the buckets that you've got in the system and that will then give you the height of the flood for all the buckets. Now, what's happening here is the nutrient solution is running up through the inlets, causing the water level to rise in the buckets, then cascading back down through the drain outlets. Once the pump's turned off, the two buckets will then drain back down through the inlets and through the pump into the nutrient reservoir. Now, I'm currently having to run more liquid than the nutrient reservoir can hand handle if the pump was turned off because there's no media in the top beds. But once the media is taking up volume in the top beds, this reservoir will be able to circulate and then stop without overfilling. However, if you're running more buckets in the system, you will need a larger reservoir just for the volume of the buckets that you're handling. So this is a very modular system. It's extremely scalable and you can have as many buckets as your reservoir can handle volume. However, after a certain point, it gets a bit ridiculous. So uh, probably 10 buckets would be the max out for this system. If you find that you aren't achieving enough exit flow, you can just have the individual buckets run out on their own line, and this will stop the pressure coming together in the center and having to fall down. And you can also adjust the rate of flow on your pump. So when my pump was on full, it was overtaking the outlet height. But now that I've turned it down, the water is escaping fast enough so that the water level stays constant. Okay, now we can add in our shrouds and our grow media. So just push the shrouds up against the edge of the bucket. And once you add in the grow media, the grow media should hold them in place uh, just with the volume it takes up. Now, I didn't paint the buckets today, but I'd highly recommend painting them. Uh, the reason we paint them is to keep out light entering into the system and allowing the growth of algae. Now, the reason I didn't paint them is because of my laziness in uh, not planning out the video properly and time constraints. However, when I put this system into place, I will paint the buckets uh, black and then white. The black layer is to stop light penetrating through into the bucket. And the white layer is to stop the buckets getting too hot in the midday sun. I'll also have a lid on the reservoir so that no light can enter in through the top of the reservoir itself. And to control the flooding and draining in a system like this, all you need to do is connect an electrical timer to the pump's power source and set it for the intervals at which you want your system to flood and drain. Uh, I'd recommend uh, 15 minute on, 15 minute off cycle. That's just what I'm used to, but there are a lot of different opinions about the flood and drain cycle. Do a bit of research and settle on what you like for yourself. And there you have it. Modular, scalable, flood and drain grow buckets. I hope you enjoyed this episode of Huchos. If you did, give me a like. If you haven't already, subscribe for more, and I'll see you next time.